Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this week we're discussing the episode Time Bomb. This episode originally aired April 28th, 2004, attracting approximately 4.21 million viewers. Alrighty, so let us start off with, let's start with the number one song in America this week, Dave. Any idea what it might be? And nothing is immediately coming to mind, though with what was on last week, I wouldn't be surprised if that was sticking around. It is still Yeah by by Usher featuring Lil Jon and Ludacris, yes. And yet, nevertheless, despite even hearing the title for those several weeks that it's been on there, I cannot recall the song. Yeah, I I can't either, but that should surprise no one. Uh, Moving on to the number one film in America this week, Dave. I would be a little well, maybe you've seen this. I don't know. Number one film in America. Now with that, because I can't specifically remember, but I do remember a couple weeks back that there was that one particular movie with Adam Sandler in it that kind of mashed my brain with the time period and whatnot. Uh, but nothing is immediately popping out. Yeah, Fifty First Dates was a while ago. That was a couple of months ago at this point. Mm. In time frame with that. Nah, nothing's immediately coming to mind. Okay, um, I'm going to give you a hint and see if that uh, maybe gets you anywhere. Uh, it's written by Tina Fey. There was a little jog, but nothing has moved. Ah, uh, okay. I, I can't... I'm 50-50 on if you've seen this movie or not. It's called Mean Girls. Uh, I think it's a case of I know of the film and I've seen clips and whatnot of it, but I have not seen the film in its entirety. Okay. And I additionally thank you because now it reminds me of the thing. It just absolute bedlam happening in the school. Small kid runs onto the scene. It's just like, hi, Bob. I need you to pick me up. I am, I am scared. I haven't seen this movie in a long time, so I might have to rewatch it, because I remember it being quite good. No, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, And finally, let us move on to some video games. So, what do we have for this week? So, on the day this episode released, April 28th, if you're a PC gamer, you can pick up a little game called Beyond Divinity. (laughs) which is uh, a sequel to uh, Divine Divinity, which I've never played any of these games, so I don't know uh, if they're any good or not. But it got, like, decent-ish reviews. Again, it it rings a little bit of a bell, but nothing as much as, like, I remember playing this game. Yeah, I... I, It's a PC-only series, so I'd be a little surprised if, or at least that one was, if you've played any of them. Oh, apparently got ported to other consoles, some of the games at least. Hmm. Oh, it's part of that? Oh, okay, it's also Divinity Original Sin and Original Sin 2 are part of the same series. Okay. I'm familiar with those games somewhat. Anyway, uh, moving along to what else we have. So on May 4th... Oh, okay. Um, On May 4th, if you're a uh, PS2 gamer, you could pick up a little game called... Oh, God, I'm going to have to try to pronounce something in French. Uh, La Passille Tactics. I don't know anything about this. Yeah, ditto. Like, I've got nothing. It looks like some kind of anime game, but it's got, like, a French name, and that makes me nervous. Uh, moving on, on the same day, May 4th, if you're an Xbox gamer, you can pick up a little game called Real... Real Rally Sport Challenge 2. It's easy for me to say that. What? It's just like a rally racing game that was on the Xbox. It's probably you fine. Know, it was a thing that was on the Xbox. Aside from games with a whole heck of a lot of blood, Halo, and one or two other typical games that could manage to get on there. However, Dave, there was another game that came out to Xbox and PS2 on the same day that I'm going to argue is probably a better game. Duly noted. Uh, 
I don't know if you've played this one. You might have played one of the sequels, though. It's a game called Red Dead Revolver. Ah, uh, yes. Never touched that one, surprisingly enough. It okay. wasn't until the later ones that I got into the series. Yeah, like Redemption or Redemption 2 kind of thing. Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, I've never played this one either, but I've I've always heard that it's really good, and I should probably give it a go. Anyway, let us move into the episode. Oh, before we do that, we have... Um, we have a... I had the Bing AI write us a little haiku to explain this episode. Oh, I'm sure it's going to have an interesting time explaining things. Okay, so. <clears throat> Illyria's power. Fred's body can't contain it. Time leaps to stop her. I mean, that's technically... On the one hand, it makes somewhat sense, but then it's also the case of actually giving time and agency, which doesn't really exist within a thing, and starts diving into the whole going into particular concepts about the particular concepts we've already constructed that was most likely cause a whole bunch of people's heads to explode. So that might be a teeny bit dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get into the plot of this episode. So... Indeed. The episode opens with Gunn still being tortured by a demon in a hell dimension, where he was left in the previous episode. When he is suddenly rescued by Illyria, who uses her ability to shift between dimensions to return them both to Wolfram and Hart, after putting the necklace thing on the demon that was in this dimension, and forcing him to then stab himself and cut his own heart out, which is fucking well, you know, brutal. The, the amulet needs to do his job, and so does the demon, so... Uh, Gunn enters Wesley's office, and both have much emotional baggage. They are uncertain how to behave. Wesley acknowledges that he should apologize for stabbing him earlier, but is unsure uh, how, as he feels it would just be awkward. Which, I mean, you know, I feel like if you stab someone, no matter how awkward, you should probably apologize. Yeah, it would <laughs> definitely wouldn't hurt. Though, especially with what Gunn was going through, having his heart cut out a couple times over the last couple weeks he was in there, and having it shown to him that... Maybe stab isn't the most terrible thing he's experienced in the last little while. Yes, Gunn replies that he's not looking for an apology, and he probably wouldn't accept one anyway, adding that his torture in the Hell Dimension was much worse. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Angel grows suspicious of Illyria's continued presence at the firm, and concludes that she is staying not out of loyalty, but because of an attraction to the firm's power. He orders Lauren to shadow her, and then turns his attention to a legal case involving a ceremonial demon pact. And yes, this does mean that Lorne has to go undercover and wear a trench coat and a hat. And it is good. Well, that's true. Like, how else are you supposed to go undercover? <laughs> you can't be like the hitman and put on any ridiculous costume and not be recognized. It makes me think of, I don't know if you'll remember this, but I think it's a season, I think it's in um, a season one episode of Buffy. I think, if memory serves, it's the episode um, I, Robot, You, Jane. Uh, where Buffy goes undercover, but she's wearing, like, the leopard print, like, coat and, like, these big sunglasses and is, like, the most conspicuous person ever. I suppose being conspicuous is one way to be undercover. <laughs> it's not. It was, it was amazing, and I loved it. Anyway, continuing on. Meanwhile, uh, we already did that. Uh, he just learned to shadow her. Okay. A pregnant woman named Amanda has agreed to allow a demonic cult uh, called the Fell Brethren to adopt her baby. And Angel and Gunn start to advise her uh, until they learn to their outrage that the client is not the innocent woman, but rather the seemingly benevolent demons who are secretly taking advantage of her and planning to sacrifice the child on the eve of its 13th birthday. Meanwhile, Illyria uh, enjoys sparring with Spike in the training room, uh, perhaps because he does not kowtow to her, and is even learning to adapt her fighting techniques, but she begins to act oddly even by her standards. And Wesley theorizes that she is growing emotionally and molecularly unstable as a result of her interdimensional travels. He realizes that if her energy excess continues to go unchecked, it will result in a catastrophic explosion. As Gunn, Angel, and Hamilton argue over how to handle the Fell Brethren case, Illyria grows increasingly disoriented and paranoid, culminating in a confrontation in which she 
effortlessly kills Angel, Lorne, Spike, and Wesley in a matter of seconds. At this point, the narrative switches to her point of view, and it is revealed that Illyria's uh, disorientation has been caused by the fact that her excessive uh, mystical energy has been sending her uncontrollably back and forth in time. Illyria again goes back in, time, back in time to a point before she killed the other characters. She inadvertently uh, begins talking, begins uh, taking Angel with her on her trips through time. Angel learns of the deaths of his friends and is horrified. After Illyria gives him advice about power, she explodes and likely decimates the entire continental shelf. But the explosion is so powerful, it blasts Angel back in time before Illyria killed everyone. This time, thanks to what Illyria told him, Angel is able to disrupt Illyria's attack and avoid the massacre. Illyria accuses Angel and Wesley of plotting to kill her with Wesley's massive ray gun. But Wesley reveals that the gun is not meant to kill her, but rather to disperse her excess her excessive energy and thus prevent the fatal explosion. Spike briefly holds his own fighting... Uh... Illyria until she uses her time control powers on him, uh, giving Wesley the chance to activate the ray in time. Illyria is left emotionally devastated by the resulting loss of some of her powers. Angel returns his attention to the fell brother in case, and shocks Gunn by agreeing, by agreeing to represent the demons rather than um, the naive pregnant woman, having uh, apparently taken Illyria's advice about power. So, that is this episode. What did you think of it, Dave? turned out interesting though it's always a bit of a question with going into time travel and all the timey-wimey shenanigans but on whole it turned out fairly interesting just with the stasis of the power that Illyria holds how much it could supposedly be contained and now with the effects of the episode how things are going to go on with her abilities and whatnot now that she's been supposedly drained of her power um but it also dives a little bit more into the concept of angel having this strength within wolfram and heart and the stuff that he kind of has to do where in comparison to pre past seasons and other stuff that they've done to save the world that it's just not fun with all the particular stuff that's there and the addition that with Gunn being back and being more involved within the story is definitely nice. Yes, it's nice to have Gunn back because he is he is a very good character. And uh, Indeed. We are we are barreling to the end of the series. So does this does this episode give you any ideas about what uh, the end point might be yet? It's still kind of branching off into a whole bunch of different directions as it kind of sits at the moment. I can see them kind of taking any sort of route, whether or not it's a case of either Angel finding a way to go against the system by using the system itself, going about it in a traditional past season fashion. Hell, it could possibly even dive into random ex machina sort of cases, but yeah, on the whole, there's nothing immediate that comes to mind that's like okay this is where they're going for the end of the show yeah i think part of the issue is they i don't know when they found out exactly that they weren't coming back but i think it was kind of like oh crap we have to wrap everything up in like a hand like a couple episodes you know always the fun thing when you're told that you only have so much time to do the thing yeah so we'll get into more about the cancellation when we talk about the final episode but really um noted. There's, there's, well, there's some stuff about it. But anyway, uh, let us move on to some international titles for this one, which um, really there's only one that's worth discussing, which is German, which is travel through time. Which is the thing that happens. It does a whole bunch in this episode. And more than just one character, as it turns out. Yes, quite a few of them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's see if we have any fun trivia about this episode. I don't think there really is. <clears throat> uh, the only real little piece of trivia about this is, you remember uh, Amanda, who's the, the pregnant woman near, in the episode? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, so she is played by David Boreanaz's wife. Oh, okay. Which was, uh, you know, that's nice. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, so if there's nothing else about this episode, uh, next week we will be discussing a little episode called The Girl in Question. Oh, I wonder which girl this could be. Well, it might be more than one. <clears throat> Darla, Drusilla, and Andrew return as Angel and Spike search for Buffy. Angel and Spike travel to Rome with plans to rescue Buffy from their old nemesis, the Immortal. While in Italy, they also attempt to retrieve the head of a fallen demon leader to prevent a perilous power struggle between two or between several warring demon clans. So, you know, the case that there's technically two plots playing around and one is supposedly important, but the other one's more important than the other one is to the characters in the story. Uh, yes, this... Upon rewatching this episode, I forgot how funny it was. <laughs> oh, okay, well, in the one case, it's Angel, there's Angel, and then there's Spike, and it's the case of Buffy. And if you bring that into the equation, those two are most likely going to be butting heads all the time, which, in a typical episode, is always fun to watch. Yes, I'm going to just give you, like, it's basically an Angel and Spike team-up episode, and it's, oh, we're going to have a good time with this one, Dave. Adios. Alrighty, so until next time, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave.